to the basic setup guide for setting up your MJPEG IP camera from FOSCAM. Uh, this guide is going to go over uh, any MJPEG camera that you have, like the FI8 910W, FI8 918W, 904W, 905W, uh, 909W. Uh, all of these cameras uh, are going to be able to uh, be uh, used with this, with this guide uh, on how to set them up uh, just initially. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and, and get straight into it. Uh, right now I have the camera uh, out of the box plugged into the power and the Ethernet cord is plugged into the back of the camera and the other side is plugged into my router directly. Uh, and this computer that I'm going to be doing the video on, it's actually connected to the same router uh, called Wireless 3G. That's the uh, network that I'm using currently uh, for this video. So you need to make sure that the computer that you're on uh, is connected to the same network as the camera is connected to. Otherwise, you really won't be able to see the camera on the software that we're going to be using uh, and you won't really be able to follow along. So make sure that that's the case. Uh, and from here, what we're going to do is I've already installed the uh, CD software called IP Camera Tool. It, uh, it is located in your CD, uh, CD-ROM that came with the, the camera in the box. Uh, but if you, know, if you don't have the CD with you or if it, if it broke or cracked, you can always download it from our main website uh, over here, uh, fossecam.us. Um, the actual link is foscam.us slash tools dash support dot html or you can just click on the support tab at the top and we have a lot of guides here uh, on how to set up your cameras um, but also we just have the CD installation software here uh, if you need it uh, for Windows you would see IP camera tool PC we would just click on that uh, and you can download the software and install it just like I have uh, on the desktop and once you install the software it comes up on your desktop so what we're going to do is double click on it and the IP camera tool window shows up and uh, this window basically shows you all the cameras that are connected to your router directly currently um, and what we have is one one camera that I've set up and it's a FI8 9810W I'm sorry it's a FI8 910W camera and we see that uh, this right here anonymous is just for the name of the camera uh, this is the IP address so we have 192.168.0.2 uh, for the IP address of this camera and the M is for uh, telling us which compression we're running in so the M is for MJPEG compression so any camera that you have uh, it would have the MJPEG compression uh, letter over here as long as it's an MJPEG compression camera uh, like the cameras I stated previously uh, so we opened up IP camera tool um, we're able to see the camera here which is great um, you should see an IP address here which uh, means you're on the, the same the right path um, you might see subnet doesn't match uh, and that is an error that's actually with networking it's not with the camera you would just have to uh, configure some settings which I'm, I'm gonna go over here in a second so what we're gonna do is uh, click on the camera right click on it and then go to network configuration and what this screen shows is basically a lot of different values for your camera such as IP address subnet mask gateway DNS server um, the IP address is basically showing you uh, what IP address the camera is running on uh, on your router. So your router basically allows, um, it, it basically identifies any device that's connected to it with an IP address. And an IP address uh, is specific to any device. Uh, two different devices can't have the same IP address. So we see that the router assigned us 192.168.0.2, which is great, and we're able to see it here, so that's fine. So we know that no other device is using this IP address. Uh, you can change it to, to another IP address as long as you know that no other IP address is assigned. Uh, you can change it to 192.168.0, 100, or 200, something like that. Uh, as long as there's no conflict with any other device running that IP address, you can change it to that. Uh, these other values, subnet mask, gateway, DNS server, these we need to actually confirm uh, within uh, our router. Uh, so what we can do actually on Windows is we can go to the start button down here. We can click it and type in CMD. Uh, or if you have Windows XP or earlier versions of Windows, you would click on the Run button over here, and you would just type in CMD in that uh, com uh, prompt that comes up. So we're going to push Enter, and this brings up the command prompt. And what we're going to type now is ipconfig, is I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G, and push Enter. And this brings up uh, the information about our network uh, that we're con connected to currently. So you can see right here, the biggest thing that we're looking for is IPv4 address, subnet mask and gateway. And IPv4 address over here is for the IP address of our computer. Remember I said that devices on the network don't have the same IP address. 
So we know that the computer is identified by 192.168.03 uh, and the camera is being identified as 192.168.02. So just make sure that over here for IPv4 address, the first three numbers are matching up over here. So we know that 192.168.0 is matching up. That's correct. Uh, subnet mask needs to match uh, completely. So 255.255.255.0, that's over here. That's correct. Default gateway needs to also match directly as well. So 192.168.01. We see that over here as well. And the DNS server uh, usually is going to be the same as the gateway. So you would just type in uh, the same numbers in gateway uh, uh, as a DNS server if it's not correct or if it's not showing up like this. Um, and again, you're going to be on a different router. You might not have uh, the same numbers that I have, but just be sure that these numbers, the first three numbers in IP address are matching over here. The, f the, the entire subnet mask is matching over here and the default gateway uh, is matching completely over here and the DNS server is the same as the gateway. Um, so you might have 192.168.11 so you would just change it to 1111 over here and then the 1 over here on IP address you would change it to 1. Um, but we know that all of these settings are correct and just a quick tip, the default gateway over here, this IP address, it's actually the IP address of your router so uh, in later videos like uh, wireless settings or port forwarding, which we're going to be getting into later, um, we need this IP address uh, to actually log into our router. So just make a quick note of that, that this is the IP address for your router. So we can go ahead and close this. And the reason we actually do uh, manual uh, inputting of these numbers is because if you, if you, let's say you obtain IP from DHCP server, and basically what this means is that the router will uh, assign an IP address automatically to the camera whenever it connects. So you're not going to have the same IP address um, forever. You won't be on 192.168.0.2. It might, it might change it. It might change the, this last number here to uh, 7 or 11 or, or 12 or 13 um, if it gets unplugged and you replug it or anything like that. And the bad thing about that is if you set up the camera based on that, if you're if you have this checked and you and you go through all the setup videos and you do the port forwarding and you're able to see the the camera remotely later on if this if this changes this address changes if you have this DHCP server checked if it changes then you're not going to be able to see the camera remotely anymore and you're going to wonder okay what happened is the camera not working anymore or, you know is something wrong and yeah this this is not supposed to be checked because uh, it'll change your, your local IP address and that would basically change everything for your setup. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything correctly uh, and setting a static IP address, which means it's not going to be changing uh, ever. So if you unplug it and replug it back in, it's always going to stay at 192.168.0.2 uh, uh, and you won't have any problems later on down the road. So we see all this information is correct, so that's great. We confirmed it in, in command prompt. Uh, HTTP port, we're going to change that later on and we'll get into that in, in the wireless and uh, possibly I think the port forwarding uh, video definitely we're going to be changing this and we'll go over that but basically uh, think about it in the sense that uh, your IP address can only be uh, identified uh, per device on your network. The port is also assigned to only one device. You can't have two devices on the same port so uh, every camera would need its own uh, port. You can't have every camera running on port 80 and usually we recommend anything above 200 or 2000 uh, to use as your port um, which is fine usually we use like 8080 or 8000 uh, the username and password uh, we will just keep that uh, that's the default username and password and the port we're just going to keep it at, at 80 for for the sake of this video and later on you'll be able to change it uh, so we can click the x over here if you change any values over here be sure to push ok and the camera is going to reboot and it's going to go offline for about 30 seconds and it's going to pop back up with the settings that you put in uh, and you can just double click it again by right clicking and going to network configuration but we know that everything is correct so what we're going to do is double click over here and it's going to open it up in our default browser which is internet explorer that i'm running on and you see the ip address here is 192.168.0.2 uh, so that's great so you'll see two login buttons over here the first one is for internet explorer Second one is for Google Chrome and Firefox and Safari. So if you're on those browsers, you would click this button and log in that way. It's going to prompt you on the next screen once you click this button uh, to put in the username and password. Uh, but for Internet Explorer, we're going to put it right here. We're going to put admin. And the password is blank, so we're going to keep that, you know, we're not going to type in anything there. We're going to click login. 
And great, so we were able to get into the camera, we were able to see the video, um, we were able to move it around, so that's great. And that basically completes the basic setup guide. Um, and from here, you can actually go uh, into doing uh, the wireless video uh, if you want to make it wireless. Um, but sometimes you might not get this video. Some people might not get this video initially if they're on Internet Explorer. Uh, you might see a black screen with a red X. We do have a video on that uh, for troubleshooting. Uh, if you go into our troubleshooting video guides, uh, we show you how to correct that. Basically, it just means that ActiveX isn't configured correctly to uh, be using the uh, OCX file, which is the file you need to run uh, the camera in Internet Explorer. Your ActiveX actually needs to be uh, configured in here in your tools and internet options you would have to go and configure some of that stuff um, and you can actually see a guide on this as well under our support page uh, I believe it's called ActiveX enabling ActiveX on on Internet Explorer um, so you can go ahead and, and see that but if you got to the screen and you're able to see video and everything like that that's great that means we completed the basic setup so let's go ahead and go uh, into the next video uh, if you want to set up wireless uh, just to be sure, uh, you need to click on Ford Administrator here, and you'll click on Wireless LAN Settings on the left side in, in Internet Explorer uh, to get to that page, which we're going to be going over in the next video. Uh, so be sure to uh, follow up on the next video, and uh, we'll see you there.